All right. Um, if you've been following us, you would agree um, that we've tried to be as sincere as possible, you know, trying to um, look inwards. You see, um, it's it makes better sense to hit the nail right on the head. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, a lot of times we tend to look at the outward. You know, um, there's a common proverb that says that you don't judge a book, all right, by its cover. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the fact that a book looks dirty, looks started outwardly, doesn't mean that internal, the content of the book is, um, is um, maybe like garbage or rubbish or something like that. I hope you hear. Praise the Lord. Now, most of the times, it's easy for us to look outwardly, you know, to just focus on the outward part of mankind. Hallelujah. But, you know, the Bible tells us that God doesn't judge, you know, like that. You know, the Father doesn't do that. Are we together, please? The Father doesn't do that. He, that's what, um, I think it was uh, Samuel that was saying that, the prophet Samuel. That God doesn't judge from outward. You know, he looks inward. Okay, it was the Lord that was telling the prophet that, hey, you might be, you know, carried away by the looks, the outward looks of the sons of Jesse, but God doesn't walk like that. God looks at the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Um, let's look at the book of uh, Hebrews. Hallelujah. Hebrews. Um, Let's see, Hebrews, I think it's uh, 4, I hope that's the right, um, it was 12, yeah, <coughs> it says this, it says, for the word of God is alive, is living, and it is powerful, and uh, it is sharper than any two-edged sword and then it continues by, by saying that it pierces even to the division or the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit of joints and marrow and then it now says that it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart hallelujah praise god so you see that the the father's focus is in the heart God's focus is in the heart. Hallelujah. You know, because out of, out of the heart of mankind proceeds, you know, um, out of the heart of mankind proceeds all the garbage that we see around the world. You know, Yeshua was saying something that um, it is not what you put in your mouth that defiles the body. Did you hear that? Yeshua is the one who's saying this. He said that it's not what you put in your mouth that um, that um, defies the body, but rather it is what is coming forth out of the inward part of a man. So the heart of a man, the Bible tells us, is desperately wicked. Did you hear? Now, Yeshua himself, the Bible tells us, did not bother himself. He didn't um, he didn't um, uh, spend or take, he didn't, he wasn't carried away. He didn't um, hand himself over to man because he knew what was in man. You know, you know, a lot of times we are not able to really uh, discern or able to actually capture the, the content of the heart of a man. I hope you hear what I'm saying. Uh, we haven't been able to do that. Now, Yeshua did not do that. He was he knew what was in man, so he never ever gave himself to that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, it is 
inside the heart of a man that all the evil proceeds. How? What do I mean? First of all, you have to conceive a matter. Okay, you conceive a matter. You you brood over it, brood over it, plan, plan. Okay, and then um, complete the program or the plan before you begin to hash. Every evil that we see upon the face of the earth, the earth by itself is okay. I hope you hear. The earth by itself is okay. But what we see all around, if all, if mankind does get into a spaceship and sails away to another planet, trust me, this earth would be as clean as. Why? Because the Father has actually set in motion for the heart to replenish itself, to renew itself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know if we've ever bothered to go into the depths of maybe like the Amazon uh, forest, you know, the depths of um, uh, parts of the earth that man doesn't even live in. No man dares go there. You'll be shocked that things are, you know, working. God has his own sanitation team. He has his different agents, okay? The animals, everything is called the ecosystem. Hallelujah. Is it called the ecosystem of the earth? I hope you hear what I'm saying. So, you know, but as soon as man comes in, the thoughts and intents of the heart of man is what the problem is, okay? Now, let's look at Genesis. I'm sorry, I'm just rushing straight into the uh, teaching. Um, uh, please, I would encourage us to, you know, invite our friends, invite our relatives, you know, uh, brothers, sisters, you know, just so that we can fill up, okay? Because the times are so crucial, it's important for us to uh, see to it that we help as many people as possible to um, to um, to hear uh, these truths. Okay, Hallelujah. Blessed be God. So the book of uh, Genesis uh, it says um, from chapter six. It says now it came to pass that men began to multiply upon the face of the earth and daughters were born to them okay daughters were born to them hallelujah praise god hallelujah so daughters were born to them okay it says and then the sons of god saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful Hallelujah. And they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. So he has condescended from the realm of the living soul to flesh. And then I says, Yet. His days shall be 120 years. Now, this is not 120 literal years, okay? Now, it now says in verse 4 that there were giants in the earth. There were giants on the earth, okay? And then it says in those days and also afterward. Hallelujah. I'd like to repeat it again. Please take note. It says that there were giants on the earth in those days and then he now continues and says and also afterward can you see that so not only were they giants in those days but also afterwards after those days okay praise god he now continues and says um when the sons of god came in to the daughters of men, they bore children to them. Okay? Those who were mighty men, 
who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord said, when he saw the wickedness of men, how great it was upon the face of the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So the father was sorry that he had made man. And of course, it grieved his heart. And then he had to destroy not just man, but both man, beast, cre creeping things, and birds of the air. Hallelujah. Now, I came here just so that we can come to that place of agreement that uh, the, from that time, men began to, you know, cause havoc upon the face of the earth. Now, God wiped away, we know that, the flood of Noah, wiped away all of mankind, except Noah and his wife and his sons and their wives also. So eight of them, praise God, hallelujah. But somehow, as men began to multiply again, hallelujah, what happened was that there was now that return. Okay? Now, look at this. Ah, oh my God. I hope I don't get into another tangent now. All right. The sons of men, or the sons of God, sorry, these are spirit beings, okay? Now, they came and went into covenant relationship with uh, daughters of men, okay? Hallelujah. And sons were born. Those sons that were born were giants. So now, um, ah, hallelujah. Oh, my God. All right, let's just go into it. Now, when Miriam, that is the mother of Yeshua, okay, was contacted by the angel, angel Gabriel, okay? After he had announced to Miriam, all right, Miriam said, I have, I have, I don't know a man. I have not slept with my betrothed husband, okay? So how is this thing you're saying? How is it going to, how is it going to be possible, okay? So the angel told her that the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. I hope you hear what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you and then a holy thing will drop inside of you. Okay? Hallelujah. Now that was how Yeshua or Miriam was conceived and that was how Yeshua was uh, formed. Okay? of incorruptible seed of the word of God, hallelujah, in the womb of Miriam, okay? Now, that is for that one. Now, as for all other, you know, going back to the book of Genesis, now, there are a whole lot of people that have different um, uh, versions. Um, some say that this, the angels left their estate, okay, and then came, um, developed their, their own seed, which they actually sexually came into, um, into the daughters of men. Somehow, I'm not sure I can, I, you know, I believe that, okay, and, and I'm not here to question anyone's opinion, hallelujah. But I know that there was a time when uh, some Sadducees came to Yeshua and they were asking him, they were, they, you know, they were trying to tempt him and they told him that there was a particular lady and that this lady had a husband and that the first hus that husband died and did not have any child. She didn't have any child for him. And then his younger brother took over the woman according to the custom and then he too died and then the third son, uh, brother, and then the fourth brother, the fifth brother, sixth brother, and the seventh brother. So there were seven of them. They all had her as wife. So they were asking Yeshua that in the resurrection, that who or which of those brothers 
would have the woman. So Yeshua told them, you guys, uh, you, you err uh, so much. You, you don't even know the scriptures. Um, hallelujah. It says, um, it says, because you do not know the scriptures. Thank you, Francis. Uh, that's Mark chapter 12, uh, verse 24. It says, for when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise God. Did you see that? So, now we know that the sons of God, what is being said in the book of Genesis, those sons of God are angels. Okay? They are in the fallen angels. They are fallen angels. Hallelujah. Now, they have different kinds of technology. They probably have had genetic engineering. Hallelujah. They, they were the ones that brought in genetic engineering upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Now, if you check the book of Genesis, um, you know, uh, uh, when I think from uh, chapter 3, we see how um, the seed of man or the uh, the spirit of man was polluted okay and 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 the nature of sin entered into man into this earth okay through the first man adam okay and then all men died can you see that hallelujah praise god now if you if how did this happen this happened as a result oh my god father I give you praise i bless your name hallelujah I thank you, Father. I bless your name, O oh God. I bless your name. Hallelujah. You see, Satan has been trying to, okay, has been trying to bring his seed upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. So who did he go to? Did he go to the man? No, he didn't go to the man first. What did he do? He went through the woman, Eve, okay? And what did he do? He got her to eat the seed. I hope you hear what I'm saying. Got her to eat, to partake of the seed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, GMO and things like that. He got her to uh, partake of the seed or the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So, if you remember, I mentioned that in those days, and even up till now, spirits are still giving information, still giving uh, wisdom, okay, to mankind. Hallelujah. Most of the scientific developments we see today are not just ordinary. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, at that time, if you check the book of Genesis, the Bible tells us that the father told Adam and Eve that of all the trees of the garden you may freely eat but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil he said that the day that you eat of that particular tree he said that dying you shall surely die hallelujah so it means that most of these serpents okay or cherubim or cherub okay hallelujah most of those spirits are custodians of knowledge i hope you hear what i'm saying so they can have the capacity of speaking some kind of things into someone or by rituals and communications these are my thoughts i could be wrong please hallelujah but these are my thoughts Hallelujah. That, I mean, even in our present day, I hear of st stories, okay, of women who are so desperate for childbirth, for children, for bearing kids. Uh, they go to specific uh, uh, hospitals or specific uh, so called prophets who would keep them in a particular place for a specific time and then tell them to go to one city, okay, to. Uh, to stay in a particular place and then they will get pregnant 
and then when they uh, when they are when they have gotten to that uh, time of that expected due date they will be sent to another city where they are going to give birth in a special hospital and all those things are communion with spirits i hope you hear what i'm saying now there are some women that go and have some kind of covenant okay with spirits in the river in you know with native doctors and things like that and the woman who was never able to have any children would suddenly get pregnant hallelujah now everybody will rejoice okay finally you are you have a baby but what happens after that you find out that for some reason that child begins to act in a particular way why because of where that child came from i hope you hear what i'm saying hallelujah so even in our modern day somehow i feel we are living with nephilims okay uh, would the husband of the woman not sleep with the woman yes hallelujah but somewhere along the line there would be interjection of spirits okay now why did i come this way now i didn't really want to come here okay um the focus is completely different but somehow i'm here hallelujah praise the lord so what am i trying to say when the disciples of yeshua asked him some questions about the days that we live in right now that when would all the things you are saying come to pass what is the sign of your coming and of the end of the age hallelujah yeshua said that in those days it will be like the days of noah and like in the days of lot i hope you hear what i'm saying so the question you would want to find out or the answer the question you want to ask is what actually happened in the days of noah now we've been discussing this for how many years now hallelujah now i read it earlier that the sons of god saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful i would say they were adequate i hope you hear me they have been corrupted and corrupted and they have been corrupted they have been uh, groomed and groomed and groomed and groomed so they now were pleasant or they were qualified to for what the sons of god that's the fallen sons of god okay we're going to do and they entered into this uh into these women it could be in some kind of rituals it could be through portals through different kinds of uh, rituals or whatsoever now the purpose of that is to be able to breed and generate a serpentine seed i hope you hear me a serpentine seed praise the lord now if the christ hallelujah came through the speaking of words from an angel okay who carried the word of god the seed of the son of god and spoke to the woman to Miriam, and then the spirit of god overshadowed her hallelujah and then the holy seed was deposited inside of her praise god now that is for the christ now i wonder what about the antichrist hallelujah so what am i trying to get across that there is what is called the serpentine seed praise god so the first man the first adam had to die hallelujah praise god we saw that in the creation of the woman out of the woman out of the man came forth the woman but when the woman had partaken of the seed the bible said that the 
first Adam was not deceived. He consciously disobeyed. Hallelujah. Consciously disobeyed and ate of the seed or the fruit of knowledge of good and evil and through him sin entered into this world. Hallelujah. So um, I don't know. I'm hoping that what I have said um, would bring some kind of understanding and not confusion. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, um, let me know if what I said makes some sense, okay? Hallelujah. And I want to be sure also that I'm not deceiving any person, okay? So you're, you're free to raise any question. Hallelujah. Okay. Is there any question, please? Um... Is there any question from anyone? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I'll just be looking out for questions, okay? So that is what I perceive. So because of this, mankind has been churning out different forms of evil. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mankind has been churning out different forms of evil. And when Yeshua was talking about, when he was talking about the seeds of the kingdom, okay, he said something. He said that the end of the age is the harvest. He said that the end of the age is what? The harvest. So what does that mean? That what it means is that both the serpentine seed okay that has been planted okay that is the tares and the wheat which is the goodly seed he said both that the goodly seed and the uh, evil seed said both of them have to grow and develop and come to maturity so yeshua said that the end of the age is the harvest. And then he now continued and said that my father will send forth his angels to reap. Okay? And then gather both the tares and gather the wheat. Okay? The tares, they will throw them into a quenchable fire while the wheat is taken. Okay? Hallelujah. Praise God. So what am I trying to say? That the days and the times that we live in actually exemplifies or actually captures the days of Noah. Did you hear? It captures the days of Noah. How? Look at what is going on around you. There's a whole lot of genetic engineering going on, both in animals, in birds, in chickens, in cows, goats, things that we, you eat. Hallelujah. And then not only that, the um, um, uh, options that they're throwing out now, you know, that you can easily uh, look into your, your, your gene and figure out if you have hereditary illnesses and then you can now edit, you know, delete and take out the things you don't want and bring in different forms of maybe options that you will prefer. So now, interesting thing, and this is one thing we must understand about the modus operandi of Satan, okay? He's the one who will cause the damage and then he's the one who will bring the solution. Did you hear? He's the one who will cause the damage and then he's the one who will bring the solution. What am I trying to say? A whole lot of illnesses, sicknesses, okay, that are uh, ravaging the earth today, okay, ravaging mankind today, all came out of the so called scientific uh, development or improvement and things like that, okay. The natural 
human being is not allowed to you know live and breathe okay eat and live a natural life i hope you hear me as the father has created instead he brought in different kinds of things you know that are supposed to according to them better the life of mankind but at the end of the day you find out that there's different kinds of sicknesses and all that and then with the sicknesses they will now bring different kinds of medications and things like that that are supposed to help cure sickness that you actually created and generated that's exactly the modus operandi of the evil one i hope you hear me so now with the different kinds of um cities and societies that we live in you find out that there's a whole lot that is going on around in the cities in the villages everywhere around the world hallelujah now remember yeshua said as in the days of noah and then as in the days of lot so as in the days of noah there was the intermarriage okay there was genetic engineering as in the days of lot there was same sex okay man to man woman to woman kind of thing uh, man to animal uh, man to birds and different kinds of things hallelujah there was a whole lot of buying and selling okay a whole lot of uh, uh, marriage and giving in marriage marriage and giving in marriage now let me focus a little bit on that marriage issue now marriage is union that's what marriage is it's covenant it's union hallelujah Praise the Lord. It is agreement. I hope you hear what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. So sometimes when we hear marriage, we should actually look at it from the modern terms and modern terminology. I hope you hear what I'm saying. So, but if you now want to uh, use the traditional, you know, you might want to select a few and leave the rest. But the truth of the matter is, union okay hallelujah for sexual pleasure praise the lord for sexual pleasure these are some of the things that you find going on now i i know that there are lots of people who are, are looking for children and they've gone into science into the sciences to go and get um you know you know different kinds of things that has happened I don't want to go into that because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, okay? I just pray that the Spirit of God will help us, you know, in those directions. But I'm saying that we, as people of God, should be conscious of the days that we are living in today. We are at the end of the age. There's a whole lot of maturity, hallelujah, of different forms of life and civilization praise god hallelujah if we look at isaiah let me quickly uh, dash to isaiah um i think it's isaiah chapter 60 if i'm correct <coughs> hallelujah i hope we are all tracking together i hope uh, there's no one that is uh uh, been left behind please let me know if we are all um, together okay it says at the end of ages all variants of human life uh, achieve their full stature and maturity that's correct thank you so much hallelujah at the end of the age now so look at this now it says in Isaiah chapter 60, it says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. Arise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says in verse 2, it says, For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross or deep darkness the people. 
but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Did you see that? It now continues and says in verse 3, it says that the Gentiles shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising or elevation. Hallelujah. Now, you may continue reading, but I just wanted us to see the aspect where it says in verse 2 that you should behold for darkness shall cover the whole earth and gross deep darkness the people now i want to ask you how come the earth has darkness and the people that are upon the earth have deep or gross darkness that should tell you and i that the people or where the darkness is being churned out hallelujah manufactured created is from the heart of men that have been polluted i hope you hear what i'm saying hallelujah praise god so here it says gross, gross darkness the people so it means that at the time when the son of man shall be revealed now pay attention at the time when the son of man shall be revealed at that time if you look around the world it says that gross darkness hallelujah the whole earth will be full of darkness wickedness i hope you hear praise god now the question i want to ask is what about you the child of god what about you now if you look at that verse one is telling you and me to arise and shine for your light has come now how would your light come where is your light going to come from did you hear now the bible tells us that all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of god all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We are falling short of the glory of God. So God's glory is here and we are way down. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we are falling short of His glory. But here He's saying that you should arise and shine for your light has finally come. Now the book of Peter says something. It tells us that up until the day dawn, hallelujah. Let's look at it. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm hoping that uh, I'm being understood. Hallelujah. Uh, let me just quickly just read Second Peter chapter 1. It says, Simon Peter, a born servant, an apostle of Yeshua the Messiah, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah. Hallelujah. It says, Grace to you and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Yeshua, our Lord, as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life that pertain to the life of God and godliness. Hallelujah. Through the knowledge of Him. So it is through the knowledge of the Son, through the knowledge of the Father, Hallelujah, that the divine nature can be deposited in you. Look at it in verse 3. It says, As His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So it has been given to us how do we receive it it says through the knowledge of him can you see so the the way we receive all things that pertain to life and godliness is through the knowledge of the father and the knowledge of the son it says through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue by which have been given to us verse 4 says 
exceeding great and precious promises. We have been given what? Exceeding grace. Eh? Exceeding great, sorry. And precious promises. Hallelujah. So that through these promises, you and I may become partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. Now look at it. Hallelujah. It says that we have been given precious promises. Hallelujah. And then he continues and says that through what? It says through the knowledge of him. Hallelujah. And the purpose of this is so that we, you and I, can become partakers of what? The divine nature. So the way you get the divine nature after you have received the seed of Christ. Hallelujah. Don't forget, when you received Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, or as your Savior, first, you receive him as your Savior, and then gradually you begin to learn how to submit to his Lordship. I hope you hear what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then as you begin to do that, how do you do that? By learning, by studying, by receiving. Yeshua says in the book of Matthew, I believe 11, 29 or so, it says, Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavily laden. He said, I will give you rest for your soul. Hallelujah. Praise God. So here he's telling us that the way we become partakers of the divine nature is by receiving the precious promises. Can you see that? Hallelujah. Now, it says, having escaped. So we have already escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Hallelujah. Verse 5 now says, But also, for this very reason, giving all diligence, giving all diligence, it says, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, Brotherly kindness. Hallelujah. Now, if you had joined us um, yesterday, uh, no, uh, last Saturday, you would have seen, uh, you would have partaken, or you would be able to receive the teachings that uh, the Lord gave to us concerning brotherly love, brotherly kindness, and things like that. So, it's a major curriculum, hallelujah, in your eternal life. Hallelujah. So here it says, brotherly kindness. Now verse 8 now says this. For if these things are found in you, and they are found in abundance, it says, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. Hallelujah. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even unto blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sin. Therefore, brethren, even so, be more diligent to make your call and election sure. Hallelujah. You know, most of us always assume that because we have accepted Yeshua as our Lord and Savior, that that's it. That that's all that is required. But here he's saying, that you should make your call and your election sure. Can you see that? So, which means that the fact that you accepted Yeshua as your Lord and Savior is not all. You have to make sure you guard your heart with all diligence. Proverbs tells us this. For out of it comes the issues of life. Praise God. Let's go back to this uh, uh, second Peter. It says, "For it says, therefore, brethren, even so, be more diligent to make your call and your election sure. For if these things are in you, it says, if you do these things, it says you will never stumble." Verse eleven. For then 
an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah. Hallelujah. Now, God forbid that I should tell you lies. God forbid that I should lie to you. Hallelujah. Now, it's right there. Here is saying, in verse 11, it says, If all these things are found in you, if you have been able to make your call and your election sure, it says in verse 11, that an entrance, a pathway, a, you, the, the access code will be given to you so that you can be able to receive the, in abundance the everlasting. It says it will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. Did you see that? Hallelujah. Praise God. Now verse, 11, uh, verse 12 now says, For this reason I will not be uh, negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in this present truth. And then he continues, Hallelujah, and on and on. And then he now says, Um... In verse 19, it says, And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in the dark place until the day dawns. This is where uh, what brought me to this particular book. It says, Until the day dawns, which is a process of time. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises where? In your hearts. Can you see that? Child of God, did you see? Can you see this? Hallelujah. It says this, that you should take heed. Okay? It says, let me read it again, verse 19. It says, and... So we have so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Some translations will say uh, the day star. Now you remember we read Isaiah. We read Isaiah uh, chapter 60 from verse 1 what did it say it says arise and shine for your light has come and then it says that the glory of the lord is risen upon you hallelujah it says behold darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but what did it say but in your case it says arise and shine Hallelujah. What is it telling you and I? Just what Yeshua said, or what did Yeshua say? That as these commotions are going on on earth, Hallelujah, as in the days of Noah, as in the days of Lot, He says, so shall be, okay, the coming of the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, the fact that there's gross darkness, the fact that there's so much darkness does not mean that you and I should join. What it means is that you and I should become very conscious of who we are. Become conscious of our genetic composition. Become conscious of our lineage. Become conscious of our bloodline. Become very, very conscious to preserve the seed of Christ that is in us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let's look at this. Look at the book of Proverbs. Hallelujah. It says, Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, 
the book of Proverbs is very important for people who are of simple heart. Um, we are, we all have our different uh, points, starting points in life. Hallelujah! I'm not laughing at anyone. I don't claim to be too wise myself, but it's important for us to understand that every single person, whether you are a smart guy, whether you are the smartest person on earth, if you don't ask, if you don't know the Son of Man, if you don't know the Son of God, if you don't know Yeshua, the Son of God, Hallelujah! You are simple. So here is encouraging us to pay attention to God's word. Hallelujah. Look at verse 1. It says, Hear my, hear my children the instructions of your father and give attention to no understanding. Hallelujah. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. Hallelujah. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he taught, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her. Hallelujah. And she will preserve you. Love her. Love wisdom. Love understanding. And she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Now, you may continue reading, okay? But where I'm trying to get to is this, the uh, verse 23. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's look at verse 20. It says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Okay? Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they will be life or they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Hallelujah. If you are someone that listens to Bob uh, Don Moen, you would remember the song where it says, uh, they are life to those who find them and hell to all their flesh. Now, listen. When you read it here, it looks very simple. But you don't understand that this is the sum total of your redemption. I hope you hear what I'm saying. What it's saying is that you should receive Yeshua as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. And as you continue to grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, he says that your health, the glory of God will be seen upon your flesh. That is what it's saying, that it will be health to all your flesh. I hope you hear. Now look at verse 3, the 23. It says, keep your heart. Guard your heart with all diligence. Be very, very diligent in keeping your heart and guarding your heart. For out of it springs forth the issues of life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Put away deception from your heart, mouth and put perverse lips far away from you. Let your eyes or your soul look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the pathway of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. And do not and do not remove your f and please remove your foot from evil, Hallelujah, praise God. Now what am I saying? You know, uh, finally, that you and I, because of the times that we are living, I've been saying this. Okay, there's a lot of pollution, a lot of engineering, tampering, editing of what we are putting in our mouths, what we eat. There's a lot of editing, okay? There's a lot of, um, hallelujah, what, do, what would I call it now? A lot of, um, yeah, editing, a lot of um, um, breaking into the 
genetic codes okay that produces the different things that we put in our system in our hearts in our minds in our minds in our eyes our ears the things we hear the things we eat and things like that now what happens is this that when we eat some of all these things now it's okay if you eat something that is bad you know like a corrupt meal you know maybe like you you what is called food poisoning i mean what happens is that after a while your body will reject it okay did you hear me please pay attention to this one your body will reject it either you throw up or by the time you take medication you flush it out hallelujah but what about something that is not that you can easily eat and it will stay and it probably digests but not only that it also begins to journey in a different way i like that lion foods i like that hallelujah it begins to journey into something else see because they are um uh, gene editing okay editing of the the meals that we take uh, the different things that we, uh, in, we put into our system now all those things the purpose of that is to uh, construct and tamper with the purity of the natural fallen state of a man hallelujah so that when the process of redemption comes when the 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 seed and the light the the word of salvation comes it will not be able to get into you because the word is coming to mankind the person who fell was man hallelujah the person who fell was man. The angels that fell have been dealt with. Can you see that? But the person that the Messiah died for is mankind. So because it's mankind, what the, that redemption is coming for is mankind. I know you want to say, what about the animals? What about this? What about that? Once mankind has been redeemed, okay, once the whole uh, what what you call um uh, the manifestation of the sons of god now this is found in the book of romans from 18 downwards okay once the sons of god have been revealed or um, begin to manifest hallelujah the Bible said that the whole of creation will rejoice because they will all enter into liberation of the, the or the liberty of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the prime, the person that has been given the the the, the beings that have been given authority over this earth, over the planet, over the works of the Father, is mankind. Hallelujah. Not angels. Okay? Hallelujah. So the person and the, 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 the beings that have been that are to be redeemed, hallelujah, is mankind. Any other thing that has been twisted away from mankind is out of it. I hope you hear what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. So it is very important, child of God, that we are careful with what we put in our system. Hallelujah. I'm hoping that I've been able to um, you know, deliver a little bit and I hope that we all uh, listened and it means something to us today. Hallelujah. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. If you have any contribution, I'll be happy also to hear your thoughts. Praise God. Um, I think we have to be quick to respond if we have any questions or if you have any contribution just take up your hands or let us know so that media would uh, allow you um, access praise God okay thank you please I'm very careful not to mislead so it's important for anyone who has any doubts or any questions to 
um, you know, make a comment, okay? Let's hear. Praise God. All right, so let's um, take out our communion elements. Let's bring out our communion elements, please. But now, we should all know that we like to take communion. Father, we give you praise. We thank you, Father, for your body that is broken for us. We thank you, Father, for as we eat, we eat life. Hallelujah. As we drink, we drink the life and the nature of the Father. Praise God. Thank you for the bread and the wine, O Lord. We ask you to bless the cup also. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for uh, today's um, meeting. I really appreciate every single one of us that came today. Please help us to spread the word around. Let as many people as possible get to hear these truths. And don't forget that tomorrow is um, Open Book Tuesday and it starts 6 p.m. Lagos time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My wife will be there to minister to us. Don't forget, please, and invite as many friends as possible. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for uh, tonight. See you again on Wednesday. Bye.